Hello friends, welcome to Study IQ. In this video, I will be discussing the Berlin Wall with you, the reasons why it was built and the reasons why it fell down. My name is Dr. Mahipal Singh Rathod and I am a faculty for History and General Studies at Study IQ. Firstly, let us discuss what exactly was the Berlin Wall. Is it just a wall made up of brick and cement? No. It was a 155 km long fortified barrier. It means it had soldiers guarding it, it had wire fences, it had electricity mechanisms to prevent people from touching it or even crossing it. It separated the West Berlin from East Berlin. So it separated a city. But it also encircled the entire exclave of West Berlin. It means that it circled the entire city of West Berlin from the German Democratic Republic. I'll explain this again while showing you a map. It stood from 1961 to 1989, almost 30 years. Uh, it looked somewhat like this when it was first built. This is the second, first second generation wall. You can see there is a basic wall, cemented wall, which has uh, fortifications on the top. It is almost uh, 12, 11 to 12 feet high and uh, no one is allowed to cross it. Now why was this built? So after World War II in 1945, Germany was captured by France, UK and USA on one side and on the other side USSR's army came in. So all these four countries or the allied powers as they were called, they captured Germany and they divided into four occupation zones. Also the city of Berlin was again divided into four occupation zones by all these four countries because they were the victors of World War II. In this map you can see here, see this area was controlled by UK, this by USA, this by France and this one by USSR and here in between is the city of Berlin which is again colorful because it is controlled by four different countries. So this is Berlin in 1945, Germany in 1945. So this east area of the city of Berlin was under the USSR control now and it became the capital of the German Democratic Republic or commonly known as East Germany. Now, there is only democracy in the name of this country. There was hardly any democracy for 40 years that it existed up till 89. There was only one party that ruled this and it was a puppet state of USSR because the communist party of East Germany was the ruling party and they did whatever USSR told them to do. On the other hand, the west part of Berlin was under UK, US and France. It became the capital of Federal Republic of Germany or FRG commonly known as West Germany. Remember these names please, they might be asked sometimes in uh, any exam like what was the official name FRG and GDR. You can simply remember as, uh, uh, this as uh, the German Democratic Republic was not at all, demo uh, were not at all democratic. Uh, this is the way that I remember it. So GDR by default East because it was a communist country. This is a clearer map. You see all the three portions controlled by USA, UK and France formed one country, single country, West Germany and this one was East Germany. Now in between this East Germany, you, there is the city of Berlin. So Berlin lay deep inside East Germany but still it was the capital of West Germany. You see West Germany was controlled from here and uh, see actually the capital was Bonn. Everything functioned from Bonn. This was the de jure capital. De facto, I'm sorry, this was the de facto capital. Bonn was the de facto capital, but the de jure capital was Berlin. Okay. So this West Berlin now became an exclave of West Germany and it became an enclave of East Germany. Please try to understand. They are the one and the same thing, but it depends on the point of view from where you are describing it. So for East Germany, this West Berlin was an enclave, but for West Germany, this West Berlin was an exclave. So its capital was located in an exclave, almost 160 kilometers away from the border. This is the photograph, a satellite image of the city of Berlin and this yellow colored line is uh, showing you the Berlin Wall where it was. This is, a take, this is taken by NASA. This was taken by NASA in 1980s. This is a map of the city of Berlin and this maroon colored border is the border of the city of West Berlin and this is the wall, the one which I am marking right now. And this is East Berlin. So you must understand the wall was not only between East and West Berlin but it also was circling the entire West Berlin city. And so here is East Germany, East Germany and here is also East Germany. 
so it is surrounded on all sides by enemy country this is why berlin wall was very important the construction started in 1961 it was to prevent east german citizens from escaping to the west germany via berlin so the reason everyone wanted to escape east germany was because there was a dictatorship there was a communist rule the rule was very oppressive there was a secret service police called the stasi which used to record everything there was high level of surveillance of the people there was hardly any uh, there were hardly any civil rights there was very less freedom very less freedom of movement you cannot go to west germany you cannot visit your relatives so people just wanted to go away from east germany they wanted to escape and this is why the east german government decided to build a fence or a wall so that people could not escape also another barrier came up throughout the east and west german border so this was the border between east and west germany and there was another barrier here this was also heavily fortified just like the berlin wall so the berlin wall was here encircling the city of west berlin and there was another barrier here so these are two different borders okay sometimes people call this also as west uh, the berlin wall but it is not correct but it was similar kind of border see this is a typical rural border which was between east and west germany and you can see here uh, there is a fence wiring here fencing here this is east and this is west okay so there is a fencing here then there is there is a no man's land that nothing can be no one can come here there is a village which is encircled by a fence then there are watch towers from where the soldiers stood and watched if anyone tried to cross they would just shoot them in this open area then there were dogs which used to bite people they used to run after people who were trying to cross and then there is another fencing and road lights and street lights to prevent any crossings so the official reason that the east german government gave to their own citizens was that this wall is to prevent any attack because they said that the west germany wants to attack us so this is to protect you from west germany this is why we are building this wall but actually it was to prevent their own citizens from leaving now this is how the uh, berlin wall looked in 1983 so initially it was uh, started as just a wire fencing in 1961 but over the period of time it was improved upon so finally uh, this is called the third generation wall so here you can see there is a cement wall which is almost 12 to 15 feet high and uh, this is circular on the top so that you cannot climb upon it easily then there are guard dogs there is a ditch here and this has wiring if you fall on this you will just die then there is lighting here so that uh, everything is seen under lights during night time there are watch towers again then there are guards then there is a bunker and again there is a wiring fencing which is electrified so that no one can cross it and again there is a concrete wall so you can see it is a four staged or a multi staged barrier separating east and west berlin so it was very hard to cross it this is an earlier uh, stage of the wall when there was just fencing there no concrete walls this is a primitive type of berlin wall from the 1960s now why is this berlin wall so significant see it is the de facto border it was the de facto border between the cold war enemies now the two sides in cold war were on one side there was usa leading nato north atlantic treaty organization or the western countries and the other side was ussr leading the warsaw pact or the eastern bloc so if you stood on the berlin wall you were literally standing on the border of the east bloc and the west bloc so Uh, the iron curtain that was proclaimed by winston churchill this term iron curtain was given by winston churchill who was a prime minister of uk so this was the iron curtain because it separated east and west europe the world was separated into east and west by this iron curtain because there was a iron fencing all along mostly uh, especially in this german border and other countries like hungary romania bulgaria because they were all under uh, the influence of ussr they were the eastern bloc countries and if you stood on the berlin wall you were right at the iron curtain now what were the factors contributing to the fall of this berlin wall firstly the policies of ussr as i have discussed in my video of uh, the fall of soviet union gorbachev's policies of glasnost and perestroika under which he decided to bring reforms political change social change more uh, transparency more no censorship to the media all these policies were brought so that ussr could reform but instead ussr just disintegrated it fell down into it broke into 15 different countries also gorbachev decided that from now onwards 
we will not interfere militarily in any of the affairs of the eastern european countries this was very important because see whenever there was any demonstration or a large strike or any kind of protest against the governments of these eastern countries all these countries here uh, these countries poland czechoslovakia hungary romania the ussr the soviet union used to send its army and they used to put this revolt put this demonstration down as it happened very famously in 1956 in hungary when tanks were rolling down the streets in the capital budapest and uh, in such a manner the revolts were put down by the ussr so this was a big help but gorbachev said that from now on our military will not interfere so this gave a big boost to people who wanted to rid themselves of communism so all these communist governments now were under the threat of protest and this is exactly what happened in 1989 also in 87 the then us president mr ronald reagan he gave a very famous uh, speech standing near this brandenburg gate of berlin it is a very famous landmark in berlin the brandenburg gate he told that mr gorbachev tear down this wall if you want peace in eastern europe tear down this wall and this is a very famous speech although uh, Ronald Reagan did not lead the Berlin Wall to fall down but his speech is considered a landmark speech and you should know this so as i said the policies of perestroika glasnost and the non military involvement led to the revolutions in 89 so all these eastern european countries they had revolutions one after the another that is why that this is called the domino effect so if one falls the another falls as well so these revolutions led to the toppling of communist governments the communist government fell and there were elections throughout eastern europe and new governments came to power and there was easing up of border controls so these new governments res- uh, removed the restrictions on border control and thus there was a hole in the iron curtain so firstly this has, so see this is this was the iron curtain okay so when there was revolution in hungary hungary's new government decided that we will not stop anyone from going from hungary to austria so in summer of 89 1989 the people from east germany they just came to hungary and cross over to austria later even in czechoslovakia people just came from eastern germany and they went into west germany or they went into austria and from here on they could go to anywhere they liked in usa uk or anywhere in the west so this is how the iron curtain slowly came down so this was a big reason why the demo uh, why the berlin wall fell down because the government saw that we cannot stop people from going from east to west there was a total restriction on people of east germany going to west you could not go from east to west not even after getting a visa only in emergencies like uh, if your family member is dying over there in the west only then you can go so these restrictions were now useless because people just went from hungary and, and czechoslovakia to austria so in the summer of ottoman uh, autumn, summer and autumn of 89 there was also uh, another wave of protest going on in east germany so people were protesting in large numbers for democracy they wanted free elections they wanted freedom of movement so that they could go to west germany and also the economy was failing very badly the debt was very high the national debt has had risen to a very dangerous level so against all these things the people were protesting and due to these protests in october of 1989 there was a change in political leadership there was one very old leader of this social unity party that was the communist party of east germany it is abbreviated as sed in german so this old leader gave way to a new leader called krenz but even this was not what the people wanted even he could do nothing the people were so angry with the government that something had to be done and that was the easing of restrictions so on 9th of november 1989 a historic press conference was called and actually it was not historic uh, it became historic due to some mistake so this person was the spokesperson official spokesperson of the government of east germany his name was gunter shabowski he was a member of the politburo he was a senior member of the politburo of east german uh, communist party now the government had decided that they would ease the travel restrictions for east german citizens to go to the west now they can get a visa and they can apply to go to west officially earlier there was total restriction no one could go from east to west but now they will ease up the restrictions but what happened was that during this press conference a reporter asked mr gunter that sir when is this uh, travel restrictions going to end i mean at what time 
so gunter shabowski did not know he was not informed about the decision so he said that uh, according to my knowledge right now uh, exactly right now as, as i am speaking and this conference was live so as soon as this live conference uh, was seen by people they cheered they went to the wall in thousands and lakhs and the east and west germans both gathered at the wall and they began breaking down they just break down they just broke down, down the wall with whatever they could find hammers chisels and whatever instruments they could find at their homes and also lakhs and lakhs of people crossed over to the west they just went to the border now uh, in a very surprise development this decision was not uh, in the guards at the border were not informed about this decision so when so many people turned out initially the guards said that we will not let you cross but there were so many people that at these crossings there were crossings all along the berlin wall okay there were official crossings like this where you could cross so uh, at the guards at these crossings they could not do anything there were so many people and they just let people pass so in the next 3 days around 40 lakh people crossed over from east to west germany and in this photograph you can see people celebrating they are standing on top of the wall they are helping people from east to come towards the west and this is how the berlin wall went down so over the next 6 months people just on their own they decided to break down the wall wherever they could and the, all the checkpoints were thrown open and in june 1990 the government officially started destroying the wall it took almost one and a half year to remove it completely and some parts of it have still been preserved as a museum and uh, many people took away parts of it and this they are selling it even today online and uh, they are getting uh, high amounts of money for that See here, the government is officially removing the Berlin Wall near the Brandenburg Gate, and you can see there is graffiti all on the wall. So this is the West German side of the wall, and uh, the West Germans used to just put up graffiti all along this wall. This wall was famous for its graffiti of different kinds of messages, art written and painted. So four months after this revolution, it was also often called as the Peaceful Revolution of East Germany. for the first time elections were held freely in march of 1990 these were the first free elections it means that there was total democratic totally democratic elections and this time a coalition of parties that was favoring reunification won the election and this reunification happened in the next 6 months on 3rd of october 1990 officially the german democratic republic was dissolved this means the east germany was dissolved and east and west germany unified to be the country that we know today as germany okay and now you have to tell me who is the current chancellor of germany and which party is in power the coalition party or the coalition or whichever party is leading the coalition you have to write it down in the comments i will uh, just to test how much good is your general knowledge because germany has been in the news in the past one year because of the migrant crisis people from syria and eritrea and ethiopia going to germany and the huge amount of migrants that are leading to problems and uh, different kind of social changes in germany so you need to know about that for the current affairs and also write down in the comments uh, your feedback about this video and any topic that you want i will make videos on that thank you very much Have a good day.